rights issue took a turn in 1966, and it was not clear whether it was for better or for worse. One thing certain was that the Negroes had taken over their own case and were no longer depending on the help of white liberals. At a congressional hearing, author Claude Brown stated the case. All the white community has tried to do is placate, you know, but, but just, just keep the niggas cool, you know, and pass the Civil Rights Bill. Most, most Negroes who are aware of, well, who've been around, have the slightest bit of awareness of what's going on politically in the country. They take the Civil Rights Bill as a new method of placating the Negro. Whatever civil rights legislation had accomplished, it had not always placated Negroes, and it had often angered whites. The words white backlash became a familiar phrase. Racial violence occurred most frequently between Negroes and whites who were closest in economic status. James Meredith went back to Mississippi, determined to prove he could walk the roads to Jackson. A man with a shotgun proved he couldn't. Meredith was not seriously hurt. Negro leaders rallied around the cause en masse to continue the march that Meredith had begun. There was growing evidence that Negroes knew what they wanted. They wanted, for instance, to be able to live in Cicero, Illinois. In an impressive and relatively orderly demonstration, Chicago Negroes staged a march through Cicero, which had always been barred to them, to dramatize their desire to be able to live any place they could afford to live. Stokely Carmichael was the militant new leader. We've got to build so much strength in building our community that if they come to get one person, they're going to have to mess with us all. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. We've got to build so much strength inside our community so that when LBJ says, come here, boy, to my war, we say, hell no, we ain't going. He invented a phrase. Martin Luther King turned away wrath with a soft answer. What I'm saying is this. I would like for all of us to believe in nonviolence, but I'm here to say tonight that if every Negro in the United States turns against nonviolence, I'm going to stand up as a lone voice and say this is the wrong way. Congressman Adam Clayton Powell had the answer. Martin Luther King is going through an agonizing reappraisal. He doesn't belong to the uh, decadent uh, aristocratic uh, colonials of the civil rights movement. Who were the decadent aristocratic? Well, I don't want to call names, but the names are obvious. Uh, Martin Luther King uh, has done a yeoman job. He's got the guts to keep on doing it. And once he knows what black power really means, he doesn't know what it means. What does it mean? It means dignity. It doesn't mean violence. It means integrity. It doesn't mean anti-white. It means pride in being black. It means you're willing to cooperate with your white brother and sister. If they're going to cooperate with you in terms of giving you the same things that they have. <laughs>